So welcome to this launch of the ITAC Climate Collective. It is an action group dedicated to advancing the contributions of artists who work in communities and schools around the world to address the climate crisis. Today, we are launching the large group of the Climate Collective, and we'll get started on some of the other opportunities that will arise along the way. Uh, can we do some quick uh, introductions just so you know a few people who are leaders in this project? Uh, on your screen, you probably can see uh, Madeline McGurk, who is the managing director of ITAC. ITAC is our parent organization, the world's first network of teaching artists, participatory artists, community artists, artists who work in communities and schools around the world. And you've already heard from Caitlin Kaminga, who is the coordinator of the Climate Collective. So she's gonna be your guide as we build the power of this group. Hey. Uh, and can I also introduce Ashlyn Ryan, who's somewhere to give a wave. Uh, she is the manager of the ITAC Climate Initiative that we'll hear about that is a very, uh, is our sort of boldest move as a project for climate. And I also want to introduce our dear friend and colleague from the Community Arts Network, the managing director, Anis Barnat. We work in partnership with the Community Arts Network and we're supported them by them. It's a new global organization seeking to activate the connectedness of arts for social change. And Anise, if you're here, perhaps you can speak up and just say a quick hi to everybody. Yeah, thank you very much, Eric. I'm very, um, very um, impressed by all the uh, places that where everyone is connecting, it's great. Um, I'm very, very humbled to be here and, and to have the opportunity to speak to you. Very humble because I regard ITAC as one of the best organizations I work with and Eric as a true mentor and a friend. My name is um, Anis, I know Eric from the El Sistema world. I was a tour manager for many years of the Venezuelan orchestras and choirs of El Sistema, bringing them to the most beautiful concert halls in the world and always having an impact on the local communities as the young musicians were offering their time and skills to kids in schools, other young musicians, retired people, people in hospitals and so on. I've understood from then that music is about the highest artistic quality as possible, combined with the humanity that lies behind. Now I reflect on this period of my life and I can tell that it was great in terms of bringing inspiration, but not so great in terms of climate change and protecting our planet which is a very crucial topic if we think of sustainability and long-term plans. Being close to the Venezuelans led me to co-found El Sistema in Greece, providing a free music education to refugees, migrants, and Greek children, building a new community, their community, their ensemble. Eric is close to the Venezuelans and he came several times in Greece in person and now very recently digitally to help El Sistema Greece, providing guidance and advice to our teachers. I understand really firsthand the importance of grassroots organizations, but I also see what a lonely world this is. And we feel all very isolated and discouraged sometimes. So when Eric told me that there is a new ITAC featured and I was very excited and I said I would be there, of course. Um, I've been on the side of the polluters for many years and now I want to pay it forward and engage in these conversations and, and find solutions. So, I'm here with uh, my several hats. The last one is being the managing director of the Community Arts Network. It's a global network. I encourage you to visit um, this and to be part of the, um, of the, of the global network. We, we have artists, art institutions, um, policy makers, business um, leaders, and one of the focus areas really on art for climate, how we can find, how we can bring the more emotional side of the art in changing mentalities, shaping behaviors, and finding good solutions. So I know that um, this will be very fruitful. I'm super happy to be here with you. And I hope to contribute a little bit of, of um, my time and energy to what will be something groundbreaking. Thank you, Eric, again for the invitation. 
Yes, Anise, thank you for being here. Thank you for the partnership in this launch of the large group of the Climate Collective. Um, and we'll put in the chat box a link to the Community Arts Network. Madeline has a, a really simple screen share that we want to introduce just to make sure we're all clear on the perspective the ITAC Climate Initiative is coming from. Uh, we believe that scientists agree on the facts about climate change. Maybe not 100%, but enough that there is no argument about science uh, supporting the concerns about uh, serious climate change. The climate change is real. The situation is not just kind of bad, it's really bad for humans and many other living species. Human activity is the main cause, especially in the current era. Human activity can be changed. Teaching artists are innately optimistic because we create change so often in our work. Teaching artists are poised to be powerful agents of change. We may not be yet as a large network, but that's the purpose of this collective, to actually become the powerful agents of change that we are in scattered situations, but are not yet in the public eye or in effect. And finally, there is hope behind that change. Uh, Madeline, there's a second screen, and this begins to share a little bit about how the Climate Collective is made up. There's three parts to the Climate Collective. And I wanna just take a moment to describe all three of these pieces. The first, um, so just to let you know, the ITAC Impact Climate, that's our, our big initiative here which is an initiative of the International Teaching Artists Collaborative, and we partner with CAN. The three parts of the Climate Collective are the core group, and you're gonna meet them a little bit. Those are five teaching artists that got commissions. We were able to commission them around the world to design and lead a project in a local community that not only addresses a local climate issue, but actually sets out to change beliefs and behaviors through the creative engagement. So there are five commission teaching artists. We're gonna be following their work over the rest of this year. Their work will create models that can be shared in other communities around the world to be adapted and adopted. There will be, they will be served as case studies to create an online curriculum that will live on the Cadenza platform, the largest arts learning platform in the world, that will help artists everywhere think about how they can expand the ambition of their artwork to become art for social change. There'll be a curriculum to help them do that. So the core group includes those five artists. It includes a science ambassador, a curriculum designer, and some support staff. That's the core group. We have a few of them with us here today, and we're going to hear uh, short films from four of those five so you can get a feel for what their projects are. They're going to meet monthly, but today we, we launched that second group, the large group. That's us. We are the starters of this large group. We're gonna meet regularly. We don't know what those meetings are gonna be like. Caitlin will give us some ideas a little, uh, in a little bit, but the idea is this is a self-sustaining, passion-driven group of participatory artists and others who work with them around the world who believe that by working together, we can become more powerful in our direct influence on climate change. We're gonna make this up. We're making it up from scratch. We believe that because it is passion driven, it can become self-sustaining. It can find the ways it will be useful, that it can find projects, that it can make resources available, that can stir up funding, that can spawn projects between different participants. 
But today we launched that group. And the first meeting of that group will be June 9th. We'll send you notice about that. And that is the day of the first meeting of the large group out of which working groups will self-identify around projects they want to undertake that will advance our field. We'll talk about that a little bit in uh, just a little bit more, but know that out of the large group that meets maybe every six weeks, we'll find out if it needs to be more or less, working groups that actually accomplish things together that build this field. So that's who's involved in the climate initiative of ITAC. Uh, and now I want to introduce two of the films that show that turn you on to two of our colleagues that are commissioned to do this work. First one, uh, meet Francine Kleiman from Brazil, and she'll tell you just a little bit about her project that we are all connected to. Hi, I'm Francini. I'm a Brazilian theater maker and the artistic director of Plateau Cultural, a company that creates immersive experiences in education. Our ETEC project will be a participatory experience for kids from primary schools of Florianopolis, an island in the south coast of Brazil. During two months, the kids will be guided by a fictional narrative divided into seven chapters, experiences, and culminating in the final moment, the school of the impossible, a school in which the kids are the teachers and a day in which adults are invited to hear what children have to say and in their own way of saying it about climate change and their imaginative ideas for change. I think that to transform our relationship with society and with the environment, we need to change our intimate perception of the world. And I truly believe in the power of storytelling and of imagination as a tool for transcending the everyday, moving between the real and the imagined and exploring new ways of seeing, living and perceiving reality. Children are already deeply connected to imagination. You just provide them with playful and fictional tools for them to fully explore that through the lenses of climate change. I am the lead artist of this project and I will be collaborating with the Plato team. I will let them introduce themselves. Thank you. I am Tainan. I'm a theatre maker, cultural producer and production manager for the School of the Impossible. I am Marcia Donadel. I work with theater and education, and I am in charge with research. Hi, I'm Evan, and I'm the project designer. I hope that this intergenerational dialogue will inspire new forms of perceiving and connecting to our planet, maybe more playful, more imaginative, and more sustainable. Beautiful, thank you. And Madeline is gonna tee up another film, but just notice the school of the impossible. The work, their work is focused in Brazil, elementary schools, and the piece I love the most that the young kids become the teachers of the adults about the issues of climate that are affecting their lives. Boy, that is teaching artists thinking. And now meet Rachel Jacobs from Australia. Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Jacobs, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm sitting here in Darug and Darwa land in the Eora Nation, which you know is Western Sydney in Australia. I acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging. This land was never ceded. Right now, this land is in trouble. This land is a place where temperatures regularly get up to 45 and 46 degrees Celsius during summertime. A lot of you would have heard about the devastating bushfires of 2019 and 2020, where we lost land, countless of homes and over a billion animals that absolutely devastated this very part of the world. In Western Sydney, it is frequently too hot and there is no vegetation. So children find it difficult to go out to play at lunchtime when they're in school. People find it difficult to travel to work. And of course, as we know, the climate crisis hits vulnerable people first. This is one of the poorest areas in Australia, and it's going to be one of the areas hardest hit by climate change. So what are we going to do about it? Let me tell you about the Heat Festival. 
This project is going to use five teaching artists working across five different art forms. So dance, drama, music, poetry and visual arts. And they're going to go into communities in Southwest Sydney and they're going to work with those communities to tell lived experiences of living with heat. I'm partnering with an organisation called Sweltering Cities that draws attention to how difficult things get when heat is managed really badly. A lot of people say they can't connect with things like rising sea levels and melting polar ice caps. But a lot of Australians can connect when we say that it's really hot in Western Sydney and something needs to be done about it. So these arts projects are going to collect these stories of lived experiences of heat and we're going to bring them back and have a heat festival where we display these artworks. We're going to invite policy makers, we're going to invite politicians and people of influence, let's say small businesses in the community to come and it is their job to respond to how, what they are going to do to, um, to address the um, rising levels of heat in South West Sydney. The people of South West Sydney did not cause this problem. They are not responsible nor solely responsible for finding solutions. This was caused by powerful people in powerful positions and they are the people that we want to reach by empowering the people of South West Sydney to tell their stories. I can't wait for you to see the stories and the artworks unfold. Beautiful. Notice those features, a local problem that hits the lives of the people who are living there, but the sense that it has to reach policy people to have an impact and to do it through joyful multi-arts expression. So it's built around pleasure and creative potency, not around the waggling finger of shoulds. Uh, and to make it a festival, not a big lecture. Um, Madeline's gonna put up two basic premises that we are building the climate collective upon. No. And these are two big ideas. Oh, two seconds, I'm gonna copy and paste them into the chat in just a wee second. Okay, Zoom is not our friend at the moment. The first of these premises is that the climate initiative uh, crisis is so urgent, artists have to up the game. It is wonderful that there are artists all over the world making powerful artworks that address climate issues. Thank God for that, it's beautiful work. I'm glad it's everywhere. And the Climate Collective says we have to go further. We actually have to go all the way to aiming for change in belief and behavior. The crisis is too urgent to have a ripple effect that is hopeful. We have to press all the way toward actually making change. We are gonna document our change so that the models come with data that supports the kind of impact one can expect. But just to note, this is different than we normally think of artists in climate change, which is making artworks that powerfully raise the issues. This reaches further. And the second premise is one about building a network. The second premise is if we, we aren't a network yet, we're a completely fragmented, passionate, urgent field but there's no there there for participatory artists. And we believe that if we can accomplish things together that make a difference, then we gather confidence that in fact, we are a network, we gain visibility, and eventually we make the case for funding to, as recognized contributors to climate action. So our hypothesis here is that if we start to become effective, hold our feet to the fire of accountability and show what we know to be true, that in fact, we do make a change in belief and behavior, we can then make a significant and sustainable and paid contribution. And we have to get ourselves to that point. And that is the work 
of the climate collective. If you start to have responses or thoughts uh, or questions, you can throw them in the chat box. I have never learned how to talk and read at the same time. I, I know a lot of teachers can do that. Uh, I'm an old white male, so I can't do that. But we have the help of Caitlin and Madeline and maybe others. Uh, so if you have a, a comment or a question, we invite them to go into the chat box. While we meet a third commissioned teaching artist, uh, Raz Salvarita, and a project he has already launched. It's underway already in just a couple of weeks uh, from the Philippines. Climate change is real. Climate change cannot be denied that it's affecting all aspects of the ways of the worlds that we know. In my country, the Philippines, we are in the midst of the danger zones, being part of the ring of fire and inclusion of the superhighway of super typhoons. Because the climate is changing, we, the people, must change the climate of our own beings. Our ways of living, our ways of interacting with each other with kindness, our ways of innovating for a sustainable planet. As a climate teaching artist, my journey with climate campaigns has evolved over time, yet three things remain to be part of my conscious creative being as an activator, facilitator, and educator. Being part of ITAC Impact, Climate Change Fellowship. My vision is to work with selected farm and coastal community members of my local community, the most vulnerable group and yet the highly valued economic force for agriculture and food security. The theme will be effective climate consciousness through performance installation art. One of the engagements would be to conduct a focus group discussion to be able to understand and gain traditional knowledge that's intrinsic within this most highly sensitive beings in connection to their natural work ecosystems. And through this, I hope to engage these communities for a site-specific installation and performance art with the intention to showcase their creative awakenings and aspirations for the world to see, value, appreciate, and be moved to take part in the global action for climate revolution. All throughout this journey, I will be working on a performative documentary where I'll conduct a day in the life of a certain fisher folk or farmer. In addition, I will highlight activities dedicated for women farm folks on how they feel climate change within their own climate in their bodies, being natural nurturer, reflecting mother nature's ways. As my former professor said, environmental problems are emotional, environmental solutions are technical, and environmental decisions are political. May this creative immersion will result to a multitude of creative emergents, local champions for climate campaigns, activators, facilitators, educators, artists, to help heighten climate consciousness and work to a better, healthy, and sustainable world we live in. My name is Raz Salvarita, your Climate Teaching Fellow from the Philippines. Beautiful, inspiring. And just to note, um, he's creating focus groups for surfacing what people know. He's focusing on the environment of their own human body. It isn't just a problem out there. He's saying it's a problem in here. And he's also using a train the trainer model where those women farmers will become the advocates and the developers of the work in the communities he's working in. Uh, beautiful project. I, I noticed we had a comment in the chat box, and Ashlyn, I wonder if you might introduce uh, who our science ambassador is going to be for our initiative. Thanks, Eric. Hi, everyone. Um, I was just about to try and type in um, my answer to that question, and then, um, but it's much easier just to, to say it. we're really delighted to have engaged. Um, a climate expert who is part of the Earth Commission. Um, her name is Diana Lindemann. Um, she has an incredible uh, CV. Those of you here in the UK, um, you might be familiar with that organization. Um, so we are still finalizing our details with exactly how she will engage um, with this initiative uh, obviously there'll be some work with the artists individually and as a group and we really hope to be able to bring her in to 
this collective as well. Um, so we'll have a lot more information to share on that um, in the hopefully in the next meeting. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really wonderful um, coup to have such an expert involved in this initiative. Thanks. Thank you, Ashlyn. So just a reminder of where we're at. So we're, we're launching this large group today that will meet regularly, guided by Caitlin, to find out what's going what's gonna to work for them. What, um, what can that group do and be together that sustains its own momentum because it does stuff and isn't just about talk? We're imagining it might meet on a six weekly cycle, but it may need to be more or less than that. And in a moment, we're gonna start talking about a key idea of that group, which is working group projects that emerge from that large group. Where our hope is that individuals from that group will say, you know, there's a thing I can imagine doing that would really build this field. A few other colleagues, will you join me in this project? I figure it'll take maybe six weeks and we'll find a little bit of time between us and we will create this foundational resource for the field. We hope a number of the projects will arise and we will, the June 9th meeting will be where that process starts. But I thought I'd let you know that this isn't just wishful thinking. This isn't just a, oh, wouldn't it be nice if people got together and did some things? Uh, this has actually worked. Uh, I was involved in building the teaching artist field in the US, a big field, but disorganized, uh, not well um, coordinated in our activities. We said we can do much better if we get working groups to start producing tools that build this field. And I wanna introduce three of those tools just to give you a sense of what can happen from volunteer artists working together on their own. Uh, the first one I wanna introduce was, is called the Teaching Artist Manifesto. We never even had a definition of who we are and what we do really hard to become a powerful group if you can't describe who you are and what you do. So a group of teaching artists took a long time to wordsmith agreement for what this field is, what it does, and then to, to double check it with all the different parts of our field, with people who call themselves community artists, with artists who do different kinds of work, and they finally came to agreement for this manifesto that is used widely to introduce people to what teaching artistry is and to let them have a sense of we are a field. A second project, this addressed the fact that teaching artists were paid differently all around the US. Nobody knew how much they were getting paid. It was like a big secret. And this allowed employers to underpay them. So a group of volunteer teaching artists said, let's gather information about how much teaching artists are paid. And they created the teaching artist pay rate calculator. And this tool is now used across the US for local conversations about how much teaching artists should be paid. It's calibrated for different cost of living in different parts of the country, but they can now go to employers and say, hey, look, by comparison, other communities like ours pay this much, and we have regular report that it has raised the pay rates of teaching artists in different areas. And one final project that became a big one, it started as a volunteer working group that said, we don't know where the teaching artists are. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they are. We don't know who hires them. We don't know where you can get training. So they created the Teaching Artist Asset Map, which is a map where individual teaching artists say, I live here, here's what I do, here's a little bit about me. And here's an organization that hires teaching artists in my area. And even here's some places you can get training. The Teaching Artist Asset Map, and there's the link to it, has gone global. So I hope everyone on this call, put yourself on the map. 
doesn't cost anything, only takes about five minutes, but it begins to make visible the size and potential impact of this field. So those are some possible projects. In a minute, we're gonna talk more about those projects. Uh, can I invite you to throw into the chat box any networks that you know of that might be good models for us? Because we're just starting to build this network. Are there networks you know of, of disconnected practitioners who actually have found a way to be powerful together? We wanna to study those networks so that this large group can become a powerful network. Uh, put any of those suggestions in the chat box. I see they're coming. And uh, while we're doing that, we have a fourth film to share with you. This is from Diana Milosevic in Serbia. I'm Diana Milosevic, a theater director, and this is Jadranka Andjelic, one of the main collaborators on the project Dancing Trees. Hello to everyone. Uh, the project Dancing Trees started from our need to address the topic of the cutting of the trees and deforestation that is extensively happening in our city because of the profit in our country and all around the world. And this action actually uh, causes the big climate changes and uh, it could really ruin the life in the cities and in the planet. And right now we are in Botanical Garden. This is really a little oasis of nature in the city and we would like to raise awareness uh, about the importance of the trees for the lives in our communities. So we are creating uh, extensive and long-lasting project that includes uh, dance theater performance, dancing trees, conversations after the performance in order to hear our audience, which are the citizens of the city, about their perception of this problem round tables with uh, experts, activists and uh, citizens and together, all together in order to learn more about the relation between politics, economy and ecology and the uh, digital platform that include various forms and the uh, website which will be the meeting place between the, the people, the activists, experts, artists and exchange place where we expect to raise, to generate new ideas about uh, uh, future activities, future projects uh, in, in, uh, in relation to the problem we are, we are dealing with. And one of the main goals of this project is really to influence the beliefs of the members of our communities because usually we treat trees as the commodity, as the furniture, and we would like really to raise awareness about the importance of trees as living entities. Uh, and just a few things to note there. Uh, performance artwork that inspires roundtables of multi-stakeholders addressing the issues of trees in, uh, in Serbia, which are being cut down in, in Belgrade at an alarming rate, to produce an ongoing platform where activity and policy and new actions get addressed, the work of a teaching artist at the heart of it. We have a fifth commission teaching artist who didn't get us a film in time, but Nick Damaris from the US will be creating climate choruses. And there's a whole process involved in the music they compose and create and how they present it. So it has an ongoing life uh, for young people through song addressing the actual issues within climate change. Uh, 
I'm, I am so much looking forward to shutting up and handing it over to Caitlin to describe just a little bit about what, you, what we're thinking, what we're bringing to the start of these large group gatherings. So Caitlin, take us away. Thanks, Eric. Um, there, I'm just going to ask one question that came up in the chat from Vanessa. <clears throat> Will the videos be uploaded anywhere for us to watch them later? Madeline, what's the good answer to that? The answer is yes. All of these videos will go up on our YouTube channel and then we're going to um, start spreading them out over Instagram and Facebook so that anyone who's not able to join this call can watch them back. And um, also this session is going to go up online as part of our learning modules within the next week or so. So that will be out there too for folks to watch back. Nice. So the meetings, we're not 100% sure yet what the meetings of the large group will include, largely because we want your input into that agenda. <clears throat> but we'll include updates on the five projects and the curriculum development that's happening with the core group, as well as updates on what you all are developing in the working groups in the larger Climate Collective launch today. We'll make sure that there's time to connect with others on shared interests and questions and ways to dig deeper into key topics that'll build the knowledge of the collective we want to keep these sessions really engaging and interesting, valuable enough to be worth your time and commitment. We certainly have some ideas about guest visitors, but would love your input and suggestions. And we're really excited about the possibility for diversity and leadership across our working groups, which can bring a variety of perspectives and experiences to the table, which is so welcome in this global field. So I'm really looking forward to working and learning from all of you. Beautiful. Uh, if people have any questions, I'm noticing the resources suggested, uh, so we're going to take careful uh, note, extracting all the ideas in the chat box. But if there are any questions before we move toward a breakout group where you actually get a chance to connect with one another, uh, this would be a moment to post a question in the chat or just unmute and ask it right now. There's Francine, one of our commission teaching artists in the chat box. All right. Oh, I was just looking back, Eric, to see if there were any uh, good yeah. questions. There's a, a several about um, artistic projects. And I wondered if you wanted to just um, talk a little bit about building the field. Yeah, and there, uh, we don't exactly know how to take advantage of this abundance of work. Uh, and I'll just mention the re the launch, the idea for this collective, it came from our request for proposals for the five commissioned teaching artist projects. We put out this proposal, uh, this request for proposals. We only had a short window of two weeks. We sent it out in our somewhat random way, not knowing how many responses would come back. And we were overwhelmed with over 90 proposed responses from around the world. And when we had to break the sad news to many artists that your project hadn't been selected, many of them said, how do I stay involved in this idea? How can I continue to contribute? And we recognize there is a pool of passionate energy to be tapped. And that's what we're trying to tap with this. Much of that work is going into creating environmentally powerful artworks around the world. Through this initiative, we hope we can make them more visible. My dream is people within this large group start connecting with one another so that colleagues in countries around the world start to connect. I will say we're thinking hard about how to adjust the hours of meetings to include our friends in Asia so they don't have to stay up all night just to say hi to everybody else. Uh, but there's the sense that artists who care about this work need to be connected. They need to share their work. They need to connect to one another to find resources and ideas together. And this is the, this is the place we want to make that happen. So uh, we want to make the work more visible within the arts 
and definitely beyond the arts. As that comment in the chat box said, we got to start connecting to the scientists, to the policy people, to the business foundations. That's the work of this initiative. Uh, let's, uh, let's let you talk to each other a little bit. You've been very patient and generous with your attention. So we're going to have uh, a breakout group that runs about 20 minutes. And you're going to be with a small number, uh, about seven colleagues. And we want to ask you, of course, to do some work for us. The first few minutes, just introduce yourselves, but don't get carried away. Try to keep the introduction section to maybe just five minutes instead of falling in love with each other during this first breakout. We can postpone that till later. We want to ask you to come up with ideas as a group and post them for us in two Google Docs we're going to give you access to. And here are the two questions we would like you to address as a group of colleagues that are just meeting and put your best ideas in this Google Doc to help us get off to a good start. The first question, and there'll be a separate Google Doc for this, what are ways we can get this network off to a good start? What, how can we get this new network, this large group that we wanna have be self-sustaining out of interest and a sense of success, how do we get it off to a good start? There'll be a Google Doc for your you, one, maybe one generous person in your group can type in while you're meeting because you can have the Google Doc open while you're talking. Maybe one person will put some ideas in there. And Caitlin, that second question. The second question, I have to get my engaging voice on right after Eric. That second question is, what are some possible good projects for working groups to take on? And just a few words about these working groups. Uh, they'll be self-managing. Each one needs a leader or leaders to take responsibility to manage the process to completion. On June 9th, we'll propose projects and you can sign up and join right then. Um, but let's just think a little bit about the kinds of projects we're looking for. Each of these projects needs a specific goal that is, as Eric says, Goldilocks sized. Ambitious enough to create something that's clearly valuable exciting enough for people who want to work on and create, and at the same time be achievable enough that the group can manage the commitment and see it through to com uh, completion. Valuable and achievable. My role with the collective is to schedule our meetings and to co-design our agendas with you and to oversee the completion of projects, but I'm not there to manage your groups. These need to be largely autonomous. Eric, did you wanna give a few examples? Um, just to sort of plant some seeds of thinking, about projects that had occurred to me that might be Goldilocks sized and I know would be valuable to our emerging field. One, for example, um, whenever I try to talk about this collective, I start sounding kind of like a babbling idiot after a few minutes of verbiage talk up in the air. We don't have succinct case studies of effective projects that have changed belief and behavior. How valuable it would be if a working group could go find five case studies and write them up into short, succinct descriptions so all of us could have top of mind examples that knock people's socks off. Boy, that'd be a beautiful working group project. Do the research, pull it together for the rest of us. Another one might be I mean, we're sort of casual in saying we know what it takes to change people's beliefs and behaviors. Wouldn't it be great to have a working group go find out what psychologists know about what it takes to change people's beliefs and behaviors so we aren't over claiming or we aren't misdirecting? A beautiful project for a working group would be to pull together in a useful way a summary of what psychology says we should be focusing on if we indeed want to change beliefs and behaviors. Uh, what about a short glossary and frequently asked questions for teaching artists who work with climate issues? What are the few key things you really need to know? 
the vocabulary, what the things mean, how they relate to our work, and some answers to the frequently asked questions so we can get that first set of ideas available to everybody so that we're not fumbling over our vocabulary as much, we can be stronger in our verbal communication. And there's two other projects I have a hunch might come up that I give as an example that you might sign on to at a later date. One is as the cadenza team is putting together the curriculum for artists around the world to up their game as social practice artists, they may be able to reach out and say, you know, if a small group could just pull together a set of thoughts for us, we could include it in the curriculum. Or they'll give you a specific assignment. Could a working group pull together this set of ideas in a concise way that teaching artists would understand so that we can enrich the curriculum? And also, uh, we have a few of our commissioned artists on this call. They may say, you know, Roz or Francine may say, you know, in my project, it would really help me if a small group of you could put together this, uh, maybe the Serbian group, if you could put together the six books anyone who cares about this should read, or the three articles that express exactly what everyone should know, they may have requests of our large group for work we could put together that would support them. But most important, and this is heading towards January, uh, uh, June 9, is you're saying, man, I would love to create this resource to build our field. Would anyone else join me? And that's what June 9 will basically be. The offer of ideas and people signing on to complete a project with you. Uh, Caitlin will give you a little bit more uh, a little later about how that's actually gonna work. But let's send folks off to these uh, working, these discussion groups. Uh, remember your two questions and we've got the links for the uh, Google Docs where you're gonna post your answers. And if you wanna open those now, they'll be ready for you. <clears throat> And we're just gonna have a big long list of ideas that are our starting place. The first one is how do we build this climate collective? And the second, what might be some great projects to undertake? And Madeline, let's see what the current temperature of this group is. <clears throat> All right, we have two thirds are, are eager to join a working group. Fantastic. Uh, to do that, you're gonna join us if you can on, Jan on June 9, uh, and then the working groups will spring from there. And the regular large group meetings every six weeks or whatever gets decided, uh, that's where we'll meet and keep in touch with what's going on. Uh, so Caitlin, can you tip us off a little bit about how the, the process of getting to those project launches. Yes, uh, so in a minute, I'm gonna post two forms in the chat. And the first is a form indicating that you'd like to join us on June 9th. The second form is if in addition to joining on June 9th, you would like to propose an idea for a working uh, group project. And I loved my group. They, were, they had some really amazing ideas. So I'm already in love with them. Um, Let's see, uh, we're really hoping that to keep the momentum going, which my group was talking about a lot. Uh, I think the fact that you're all here today speaks volumes about the role of visual and performing artists in addressing the climate narrative and a collective belief that whilst there's hope for change that it needs to be grounded in action. Um, I also just wanna say on a personal point, I can't quite believe and I'm, I'm in the same room with Eric Booth and John Deke at the same time. <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> Eric, I think you have some final questions for uh, the working groups. I'm uh, gonna post those documents now. Okay, good. So uh, be sure to save those links. I noticed in the chat box, uh, someone reminding us that you can save this chat yourself. If you wanna catch some of those links, we'll save it for ourselves. But if there's ideas or links there you wanna have, 
I think it was Jeff who said, find the three dots and that will save the chat, those three dots in the bottom right of the chat box, that will save this chat box on your computer. Um, let's see what, I don't think I have any more specific information to share. Uh, we have a couple of minutes if you have questions uh, or uh, something you think is important for the whole group to hear in this first grappling with the possibility. Anyone feel free to uh, put a question in the chat box or just unmute if you've got something that must be said. Hi, Eric, this is Beata. Hi, John and everyone. I just wanted to share what Jean uh, mentioned in our group about within these groups that to keep it creative since most of us were all creative that the process doesn't have to be um, the process itself can be like creative that even if you might be working on policy or psychology, whatever, like it can start off with a creative activity and people can switch off so that it's because I feel like, um, you know, this can be overwhelming. There's a lot of steps, but we can still make it work for us in keeping everything creative. Good reminder. I Thank you, Beata. I said that correctly. Thank you. Uh, one little note I was going to add at the end, but that's a perfect segue for uh, earlier today, I was in a conversation with two colleagues um, outside of the teaching artist field who didn't really know about teaching artists. And they really wanted to get a sense of like, what is it that teaching artists add? You know, we've got all these artworks and we've got, we've got this art connection to community, uh, to, uh, to climate concern, what is the distinctive piece that teaching artists add? And the answer that came to me was the reminder, the number one goal of a teaching artist is, is the capacity to activate the artistry of other people. And when that capacity is activated, it is so universal and so powerful, its energy can be channeled in many different directions. One of those directions is attending to the impact of climate change on our lives. So it is their artistry, their wish to make stuff they care about that then gets guided into change that addresses the climate challenge. Other thoughts, um, let's see, Lee Joan, Lee is asking how to reconnect with those in your breakout group. Wow, Madeline, how do they do that one? I would say the best way, this chat has the ability to private message each other. And I think you could private message um, each other your email address. You could drop it in the chat if you're open to everyone staying in touch with you. Um, there is no record of who was in which group when, so it's one of those self-starter situations that the chat on the right-hand side can be saved. So if you hit the three dots and hit save, you will have access to everything that's been written, including any email addresses that get dropped there. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, my name is Maureen Heffernan. I'm from New Jersey. And um, uh, Eric Booth, a long time ago, called me a lifer, and I am more than a lifer. <laughs> but um, I mentioned in our group and would be very interested, as we look at cultures that um, have preserved things, we often look at um, what they might be called wisdom councils. And I noticed that there may be other people in here that are in the second, the, the act three of their time as teaching artists. And I wonder if there's a place for people to come together and um, gather some of the oral testimonies of other social justice issues and climate discussions that have happened to sort of, as we save that, because as that knowledge, as that knowledge moves on, we want to make sure that, that some people have access to it. So that's something that I would be interested in working with other people that want to do that. So. Beautiful. Maureen, that is exactly what the launch of a working group sounds like, which is there is this pool of knowledge that we can tap that serves us 
And the working group finds out a way to help us all gain access to that. So beautiful suggestion. And I'll just note one climate project I'm working on in the state of Vermont, that's one of our efforts uh, that we have a, a, a native elder who is guiding conversations around the state that are about social change and long knowledge from the Abenaki tribe. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, we, we have just another couple of minutes here. We're vamping so people can have a, a furious dating exchange in the chat box. You can do it either by private. People are all, seem to already be past the private part and say, any of you, it's okay, contact me. And we will feel free to contact the emails of this group with further information. You gave us your permission and we don't ever want to overstep our bounds, but to keep you up to date on things that are already coming up in the chat, alternative times people can join, how do we accommodate people in other time zones, all of that to be worked out. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, we won't overstep our contact to you, but we will um, initiate it on the front end. Sorry to interrupt. I've just seen something else in the chat. Someone said, could we hang back and the group stay behind to exchange email addresses? And I can certainly keep the call open for five more minutes if people want to do that afterwards. So feel free sure. to stay on. Yeah, so if you were in a particularly friendly breakout group, if your group can stay on for a bit, you can get your connections made. Uh, I think that might be it for our official duration. I wanted to end with just a little piece of poetry that I think captures what we're up to here. And this is the last stanza of a poem by Robert Frost. The poem is Two Tramps in Mud Time. Most of the poem is kind of a bummer, but the last stanza, I think it says what we're up to about bringing in this passion part of our work together with the uh, long time history part of our work. But yield who will to their separation. My object in living is to unite my avocation and my vocation, as my two eyes make one in sight. Only where love and need are one. And the work is play for mortal stakes. Is the work ever really done for heaven and the future's sakes? Thank you all for joining the Climate Collective. We're just getting started. Stick around if you want to make connections and hope to see you on June 9.